Radley Horton is a climatologist at Columbia University in New York. He advises the city government on climate change. New York City is experiencing phenomena that are consistent with what we expect to happen with climate change. Um, there have been some very recent, well-documented, intense precipitation events. Um, one in August of 2007, um, an intense thunderstorm really shut down um, many parts of New York City's subway system for, you know, on the order of half a day for some of the systems. As greenhouse gases in the atmosphere continue to go up, um, we do expect to see an increase in the frequency, intensity, and duration of everything from heat waves to intense precipitation events to coastal storms. Any severe increase in rainfall leads to a danger of flooding. The deeper underground, the greater the danger. Other cities around the world will have to follow New York's example in installing more powerful pumping systems. Creating more green spaces and keeping the drains clear are useful short-term fixes. But cities like New York are most obviously built upwards, and this leads to other dangers. Tall, glass-fronted buildings are the hallmark of any modern city. But a hurricane's wind speed increases with height, and glass windows are a weak spot. But even in more hurricane-prone countries, this type of modern urban design is becoming more and more popular. En los edificios que están construidos con materiales resistentes también pueden sufrir daños en algunas de sus partes. O sea, la todo lo que es los cierres de los edificios, las ventanas, pues son eh, muchas veces destrozados y provocan daños en los interiores de las viviendas al penetrar el viento por esta por estos eh, aberturas. A hurricane strength wind will seek out weak points. Even when the glass itself is strong enough, its joints and fittings may not be. At the moment, only the core structure of buildings is covered by hurricane building codes. O sea, constituye hoy un reto concebir nuevas urbanizaciones que consideren la protección contra el bien. Hurricanes don't distinguish between town and country. In the rural parts of Cuba, the effects of such severe winds are very different, but no less devastating. ¿Qué, qué fue lo que pasó? Bueno, lo que pasó por aquí fue un ciclón tan grande que, que, que los árboles, los árboles, palmas, eh, las hojas se las quitó, que las dejó peladita, peladita. Hurricanes Gustav and Ike wiped out about a third of all the crops in the countryside. Over 50,000 tons of food were lost. As elsewhere, in Cuba, it's the countryside that feeds the city. El ciclón es algo, es algo triste, es algo que afecta al campo y de hecho afecta a las ciudades. El campo es el proveedor de, de, todo, lo que se, de todo lo que se come en las grandes ciudades. Los árboles, los árboles se fueron, uno los tumbó, agarró, palma, mango, y el que no lo tumbó, le arrancó las hojas como si hubiera sido una tijera. Y como tal, este ciclón, las afectaciones fueron grandiosas, eh, fueron desastrosas. Eh, considerando que nos echamos alrededor de cinco meses para empezar a producir comida para llevarla a, a las grandes ciudades. Until the countryside begins producing again, the cities have to somehow feed themselves. As with the building project, the Cubans have adapted and improved an existing scheme to help them cope. Bueno, nos encontramos en el Parque de la Juventud. Aquí se desarrolla hoy la espoferia de la agricultura urbana. La agricultura urbana surge en nuestro país hace 15 años con el objetivo fundamental de garantizarle las hortalizas eh, frescas al pueblo. Esto también con una situación estratégica. En nuestro país es muy azotado por los huracanes y por el, por el fenómeno atmosférico. Y realmente la dirección del país buscó esta agricultura o creó esta agricultura. 
Every available space in built-up areas is used to grow vegetables. Unlike the large farms in the countryside, they go for a very quick turnaround. Para darle solución a la alimentación del pueblo con rapidez. Porque realmente estos cultivos que ustedes pueden, estos productos que ustedes pueden apreciar acá, en menos de, hay algunos que en menos de un mes ya comienzan a, a producir y el pueblo los puede obtener con rapidez. Eh, pasa un ciclón y de inmediato es la primera presencia de productos que el pueblo va a tener en, en sus hogares. Y es por, es por eso que la hemos desarrollado en, en nuestro territorio. Urban farming now accounts for about half of all vegetables eaten in the cities. Olga Oi runs a farm in the middle of Havana, selling fruit and vegetables directly to the local community. El año pasado, eh, pasando el, eh, un huracán que no nos afectó tanto, eh, lo único que aquí las plantas eh, fueron golpeadas por el viento, pero muy pocas, porque son plantas pequeñas, no, no tuvimos, eh, no sufrieron tanto el impacto eh, de los vientos ni de las aguas y rápidamente nos pudimos recuperar. Small scale farming with low lying vegetation means less chance of wind damage. Even when the fields in the countryside aren't badly affected by a hurricane, often transport to the cities is. So these farms are proving invaluable. Estos huertos son importantes a la hora de pasar eh, un huracán o ciclones, ya que es, es, van a ser la única forma productiva que va a apoyar lo que es eh, la comida en la ciudad. Quiere decir que pasando un fenómeno natural, la ciudad no se queda desprotegida y aunque con estos huertos no va a suplir toda la demanda, pero sí va a haber presencia de producciones eh, dentro de las mismas ciudades. While severe wind and rain affects urban areas, for cities on the coast, the greatest danger lies elsewhere. When a hurricane comes in from the sea, the wind pulls the seawater upwards, leading to giant waves that can flood the coastal areas. This is a storm surge, and the higher the sea level is in the first place, the worse it will be. Just by virtue of sea level rise alone, and even if the sea level rise is relatively conservative, even if you don't invoke a lot of melting of Greenland ice sheets, for example, even if actual storm frequency itself doesn't change, so we're not saying there's more hurricanes or more nor'easters, just by virtue of the seas being a couple feet higher, um, you'll have flooding events maybe four times as often as we have them today. So that's one of the critical messages is you don't have to invoke extreme climate change to really see a dramatic change in the frequency of a lot of these hazards. Some cities build flood defenses like the Thames Barrier in London, designed to be big enough to protect the city against hurricane storm surges. In New York, they're debating whether to build a similar barrier. A design for one is already being considered. But it's an expensive option, and not one all cities can realistically consider. Barriers like this might work for cities on estuaries or bays, but they're less of an option for places built along the coastline itself. Cities like Miami. The city of Miami spreads along the shoreline of the Atlantic. The more southern cities of America's eastern seaboard are at greater risk of hurricanes. And as the climate warms, the chances of being hit by a severe hurricane increases. Here, they know that it's just a matter of time. I'm the emergency manager for the city of Miami Beach. Basically, homeland security, hurricanes, any uh, major emergencies, could be a plane crash, could be a uh, building collapse. Uh, but what we deal with the most is hurricanes. In recent decades, the coastline of Florida has developed rapidly putting more buildings and more people in the front line. As in New York, a storm surge presents the greatest threat. Our big concern is flooding. Flooding causes more damage than wind. I mean, if we ever experienced a very high storm surge, that's where all the damage will come from. The first probably floor or two in these hotels on the beach would be underwater. So that would cause a tremendous amount of damage. 
Even if the windows don't break and the walls don't fall, water damage is quite more devastating financially and uh, public safety uh, wise. You know, it's hard to seek shelter when you're seeking shelter and the water is rising above your head. Regardless of how severe the hurricanes become, there are more and more urban areas at risk because of new development on the coast and because more people are living in cities. The consequences of any hurricane hitting Miami now are significantly worse than they were even without global warming. We're building more, we have more houses on the coast, and the same with all the Caribbean islands. You have all these resources, all these uh, hotels and that were not there 50 years ago. We've been lucky, you know, the last huge storm we had was Andrew, and there wasn't much water uh, tied into that storm. It was mostly wind, and all the devastation was caused by the wind.